Okay, so today in Blender, we're going to be learning how to make realistic woodlands and forest scenes in Blender. So without further ado, let's get started. So first, let's open up a new Blender file and save it as our forest scene dot blend. Save that. And now we can delete the default cube. So let's go up into edit and preferences because we're going to be enabling a few add-ons that are really going to help us with this process. Firstly, for our trees, we're going to enable sapling tree gen. So you check it there. And for our surrounding landscape, we are going to enable ANT landscape right here. So you're going to check that as well. Once you have both of those enabled, let's start by adding our landscape. So if we were to zoom in right now and we do shift A like we do to add a mesh, you'll see that there's a new option now called landscape. And you see it's added a pre-made landscape with lots of noise. And this is the default one. You don't need to tweak any settings. And this is the one that we're going to be using because I like how the basin forms there. So what we can do is we'll scale that up. And oops, I have accidentally inverted it like this. Now let's shift that over to the side by using G and Y. Move it right there. Let's add a, our, a curve. And then we can come down here to sapling tree gen. You see it says undocumented because that's it's not a default thing in Blender. And now we have a pretty nice sapling. But it's not great. It kind of looks too much like a bush in my opinion. It's supposed to be a tree, but I don't like how the trunk is so short. You could use it if you want to, but I'm not. So if you see down here, if you haven't moved or done any other commands on the tree, you're going to see sapling add tree. You're going to click that. And now we get a lot of settings. All we need is to go down here to load preset and I am going to do a weeping willow, which in my opinion is a much better looking tree. Although you could do other things like the Douglas fir, which also looks good, but I'm going to do the weeping willow. And you can always add more trees and then scatter them to look different, which is what we're going to do. We're going to add different types of trees. So now let's click away from that. Drop down that drop down and let's start arranging our trees in our landscape. So let's scale up our landscapes uh, slightly and let's scale down our trees because we're going to be needing a lot more. So we can start by scattering our trees around our landscape. And there are just a few rules that I've found make our make the landscape look better. Try to have the trees densely packed because that really we're going to add fog later. So if we have densely packed trees with fog, it's going to look better than sparse trees. And also try to make them form a ring pattern because our camera is going to be here. And normally in the real world, trees are not situated on floating islands. So yeah, those are the two things that I would say. And let's start. So now once you've got a few of them, you can select two of them and do shifty to duplicate them two at a time. But try to do uh, not do that so much because in real life, we don't have patterns of two trees stuck together repeated many times. These are going to be really densely packed. So these four around there, will it'll be so good that we'll not be able to tell the difference if it's packed or not. There you go. And we can keep duplicating these. And once you're happy with it, you can stop. I'm, I'm going to do more. Uh, th than this, even though it looks pretty good. I think I think we need quite a few trees in this scene. But remember to leave room for a few other types because we don't want to just have one type of tree. And if a few of them, just the branches are sticking out, that's fine. Uh, in fact, you should have a few where just the branches are sticking out because in real life, trees also have, you know, this little, uh, when they're pruned or their branches fall out, you've got these little thickets there. So leave a few stuck in the ground. Okay, so the first few trees are done. And now let's add another sapling tree gen. So we're going to curve sapling tree gen. And we can change our tree again. Now, some of these, it's a bug. They don't work. Like, for example, you hit willow. See, you get some errors. But that's why I'm going to use a pine. Because it looks really good. And I think it'll fit very nicely in our scene. So let's X out of that. And we can start scattering our pines. Scale it up slightly. And let's start by putting a few pines in the scene. Not too many, but just enough to add some variety. And keep a few there. And we can make a few of these. 
like so. Just to, you know, set the background, because a forest typically has more than one type of tree. Now, you can also go by hitting 7 on your keyboard into top view. So, you see, now you can easily move your trees and place them. I think I'm going to grab a few of those and duplicate them. Hit 7. And you can see that some of them are kind of floating, so let's just move those down and move them around here. Now, the reason why I'm emphasizing on so many trees is that we need it to look like a dense forest and not just like, like I was saying, a floating island. So this should be enough. Now, we could use particle systems to do all of this work for us, and I would normally do that, but for this kind of project, I don't want to use them because particle systems tend to make trees densely packed, and it kind of has a kind of disorganized feature about it, while this is kind of natural and it looks good because you have control over it. So let's just duplicate a few more of these pines, and then we'll be good to go. Yeah, I think that looks good. Now we can move on to texturing because this boring gray scene, if we go into our other mode, boring white scene isn't really great. So let's start by texturing these guys. So let's select all of our trees in our drop down menu. And we can do control J to join them into one uh, single tree. So this will be easier to texture it instead of having to do an extra step of, you know, transforming all of those textures into uh, copying over them. So let's create a new texture and let's call it bark. Okay, so I, oops, not with that there. Okay, so I've attached um, a few textures in the description below of the video. So if you want to get them, just go and download them from there. I've linked it to a site called Polyhaven and those are, it's a free and easy to use site. So you just download them. You can download them at 4K, 8K or 2K resolution, but I've done 4K cause I find that it's a nice medium and it doesn't uh, take too much power or uh, the files aren't too big. Okay, so let's go here, the base color, click on this yellow dot here and we can click on image texture. Now you see our trees go black cause we don't have one on yet and we can hit open. And let us go down to our download and downloads because that's where I downloaded mine. And I'm going to put willow. And you see bark willow here. So I'm click on that. Textures. And let's just select the diff for now. There we go. Our trees are looking pretty decent. It's got a nice woody texture to it. We could use a bark texture as well. But I like this one because I feel that it, with the fog, this will look better than like a rough bark. But it's still a little shiny. And let's fix that. Number one, let's turn on our specular and turn up our roughness to max. And there we go. We've got a much better looking version now. Now for the rocky landscape, let's hit new again. And let's just name this our landscape. Not rocky, but I'm just going to call it landscape. Let's click here. And I have also linked another one for this. So same procedure. And it is actually misspelled slightly. It's called forest with two R's instead of one R but that's okay. And let's select our diff again. Nice. Okay. So for this, it, we need a UV map it. So let's go into the UV editing tab, find our landscape here, and let's do UV and smart UV project, hit okay. And there we go. Now our thing has a texture applied to it. If we move over here and select that, you're going to see it and we can turn off overlays. So we've got a nice little texture here. You might say, well, that's really big and that's true. It is. So we can UV map that, select it, select actually all of it. Since we have overlays off, you can't see it, select it. And let's just scale that out slightly. Now, the reason I say slightly is once you have fog, you kind of need a little bit of detail left on your thing because you're not really going to see it very well with the, with the fog. So we need to have a little bit of this. So let's go back to the layout now. <clears throat> a few more things we can change are turning down the specular, sorry, and turning up the roughness. That looks pretty good. Let's add a few normals now to make it look even better. So number one, some of these trees can be lifted up slightly. Now let's go down to our normals, select there, and select normal map. 
oops, I selected the tree normal. We actually have to select our landscape for normals. We could do normals on the trees, but it's not gonna really look decent with our fog. So let's do a normal map on the landscape. And here in the color, we can just select our image texture. And you see it's trying to map a normal that doesn't exist yet, so that's why it's looking weird. And we can hit open. Now in our downloads, let's go back to our landscape. Sorry, forest ground, two R's. And we can find our normal. So nor GL, or it just has to have NOR or norm sometimes. And we can open that. And you see that we're kind of getting a little bit of 3Dness. Now let's actually turn up the strength. And that's a little too much, but this looks about right. So a strength around 1.3 makes it look 3D. Or you could change it up to 1.9, but I think that's like the limit. Yeah, at this point, it looks perfect. Okay, so now that we have that done, we can start by adding our volumetrics or fog. So I'm going to duplicate this one more time, the entire group there, and we're going to just keep it like that. Looks good now, right? So we can actually space those out slightly, even scale that down a little bit and just place it. That looks pretty good. Looks like a nice densely packed forest. So we can start with our fog. So let's add a cube and we can scale that up. Yes, you have to scale it up this much. I know what you're thinking. Why are we putting a gigantic white cube? Well, you're going to see, because we're going to texture it with fog. Let's do SC. And let's try to minimize the thing that goes into the hill, because it's just going to be more unnecessary rendering for our computer to do. So around here is good enough for our scene right now. And we go down here, and we can start editing it now. Now, this is just a, a gigantic white cube, like I said. We don't want that. So let's actually start texturing it after I get this aligned. There we go. Let's select it and let's go and add a new texture. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our principal BSDF and we're going to remove it. And you see it goes completely black and that's what we want. Don't worry. Now we're going to go down to our set to our volume and we're going to set the volume. We're going to set it to a principal volume. And now you see it's transparent and we're going to go into cycles this because Eevee doesn't do well with fog as you can see it's glitching up slightly and we really don't want to edit it like this so let's go into cycles set it to cycle and set it to render on our GPU and go into render mode okay that is some thick fog I will say yes so let's go into our materials and we can change some settings up here let's drop down the volume here and now you see we've got some nice settings that we can tweak so let's go into this kind of angle and let's turn down the density to around 0 0.1. That's a little, that's a little less than we would usually have. So I'm going to turn it up slightly more, but first, before we do anything, let's get our camera set up so we can really see how our scene is going to look. Let's hit N to lock our, and move to view to lock the camera to view. Hit N again to drop out the side panel and we can zoom out. And we're going to situate our camera right about here. Okay, so now we can get a good idea of how it's going to look. Number one, I think I'm going to move that up slightly to SC in C direction. And now you can see that really our eyes were tricking us there because you see how dense that fog is right there? We only need to do it a little bit. So I would say around 0 0.2 is a good amount. Okay, now that our camera is almost set up, let's select it in our viewport and let us change a little bit. The focal length, we can actually zoom that out slightly. And nothing really else needs to be changed so far. We can just make it look like this. Now, let's get out of our camera view and do one more thing. We're going to do Shift D to duplicate our fog and we're going to RY90 to make it rotated by 90 degrees. Let's scale that down and scale it down in the Z, Z dimension as well. 
and let's move it forward. Uh, X axis right there. Let's go to our camera now and see. Oh, wow, that looks really good actually. So let's get out of that and let's start with our lighting. So I want to stay in cycles because we, cycles is really good for lighting and volumetrics, like I said. It, and it's really going to show us how the light looks through our volumetrics. So let's do shift A and we can now add a light. A point light will work for what we're doing. I just move it there. Right around here. Let's turn up the power to around 10,000 watts. And we can make it kind of orange, like right. A little a lightish orange. It's just enough to look, you know, kind of natural. That you would have something like that in a forest. And it can be just like, you know, a campfire. Like it really makes, I think it, these lights are great. On orange, it's a great color because it kind of looks like something natural that could actually happen in a forest. So we're just going to pretend that these are campfires. And let's put one right here in our back. Now let's go back into our camera view. And um, that really just looks enchanting. I think we're almost good to go. Now, one last thing. We're, let's add an HDRI. So our HDRI is going to be another one that I've linked to in the description. In fact, I'm actually just really quickly, I'm going to add another light. Like just around here and move it. And you can see that we're getting some God rays. And I'm going to drop the power in here to like a thousand watts, just barely illuminated. Maybe even um, 500 watts will work. Yeah. Now let's also go here into our thing and hit denoise so that we get a much clearer picture. Now let's do our HDRI. So we can go in the shadings tab and I've linked the place to download our HDRI as well. You see EV still not written on our things very well, but we don't need that for now. Let's go into our world. We can add a, and we can add an environment texture node right here. Let's link the color to the color there and we can open or HDRI. So I'm going to type night and this one. Let's open it up. And now if we go into our render mode, you can see we've got a beautiful little HDRI environment texture. And we're going to orient it so that the stars are showing. Our entire scene is going to be shifted here. So RC. And we can just shift it around here. Let's go back into our camera. And now it really looks, look, you've even got some forest around there. Although that's not showing in the camera. We can do this. And I think that's going to look visually great once we render. So let's actually go and render. So we're going to go into save our file again. And we can render our image. And now your computer is going to start spinning up. In fact, my noise might even start cracking because my computer is actively working. But once this is done rendering, all of our noise is going to go and we're going to have a beautiful forest. So I hope if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to help me out. And you can watch some more of my videos on my channel page. Thank you and I will see you guys in the next one.